Hello and welcome. My name is Brenda. My channel is Handwork Maniac. Today is Saturday, February 10th, and I'm here to give you a like a January update on my cross stitching plus a little bit into February <laughs> first 10 days. Um the pieces on the wall behind me, I did finally change out my wall so that it is the winter stitching. Um, if you want to know what the names of any of those are or a close-up picture of them, they're, the video that I uploaded just before this one is a tour of the wall and it tells you what the name of each one of them is. Okay, so today I have one finish, four starts, a whole bunch of works in progress that I worked on since the last video, some stitchy kindness, a few purchases, and then I'll tell you about my February plans. And this is all about cross stitch. <laughs> okay, I had one finish in January. This is called Summer Sketches Lighthouse by S.V. Stitch. I got her pattern on Etsy. It calls for DMC. And it has lots of blended threads. But it makes it look so not very not that many colors, but lots of blended threads that makes it look like watercolor. Colors just blend so beautifully. Lots of back stitch. I did mine on what is this? I think this is 46 count antique white linen. Oh, they're not very big. But oh, they're so beautiful. I'm going to frame it just like that with the two next to each other. I think they're pretty next to each other. And I'm going to put, you can see where I carried my thread between these two birds <laughs> with that dark black on that white. But I'll put um, a darker piece of fabric behind it when I frame it and then you won't be able to see that. I don't usually do that, but I was being so lazy and they were such tiny little stitches. I just thought, no, I'm just going to carry it. But that was just fun to stitch and so pretty. Okay, and I had four new starts in January. This one I just started yesterday. I saw this on Lala D Stitches floss tube. Love her floss tubes. And decided I had to have it. It's by Mojo Stitches. I found mine on Etsy and it's called In the Library. And I'm using the called for threads, which are cottage garden threads. You can see how pretty they are. And I'm using the called for fabric, except not the called for count. The called for count was 36 count baked clay by Fox and Rabbit. And I did it on 32 count baked clay by Fox and Rabbit with two strands of floss. The directions call for 36 count with one strand of floss. I did a middle start and this is the edge of the shelf on this side. It's not huge. I think it's 142 by 142. But I just think it is so pretty with those cottage garden threads on that baked clay. And then this was a start for my I start along with my friend Kim for her birthday. Spring Moon by Plum Street Samplers. I'm using the called for colors, which is DMC and Classic Color Works. Oh, and a couple of weeks dye works. And mine is on 46 count peanut by Bee Stitch Me. 
one strand of floss over two fabric threads. And I started in the middle, so I'm just working on the urn and the, the bowl, <laughs> the vase, I don't know, a bowl, and the top of the roof of the house right there in the middle. So that was way fun to start. And then Teresa Kogut has a stitch along in her Patreon group. And it's called Home Town. It will go for two years. And look at all the, you can see all those houses kind of blurred out, but you could, it's a, a little village. I guess I couldn't stand it. I had to start it. I'm using the called for colors. which are all DMC. But I'm not using the fabric. I'm trying to remember what fabric she recommended. I think it's up in the attic. But I'm doing mine on I used something that I already had, which is 46 count buttercream by Lakeside Linens. And I have the January section done. I believe it comes out about the 15th of each month. So the February section has not come out yet. And I think that she recommended 40 count. I'm doing it on 46 count. And my last new start, I finished um, Lost No More, Dimensions Kit Lost No More, um, that I work on on Sundays and showed that a few months ago, my finish on that and my end of year finish parade. So I needed to start a new one to work on Sundays. So I chose out of my stash, um, this Jan Lynn kit called Portrait of Christ. It is artwork by, based on the artwork by a painting by Warner Salmon. This painting of Christ has those bright blue eyes I have quite a few patterns and kits that I've collected of Jesus Christ. They all have different hair coloring and eyes. I thought this one was interesting because it has the darker hair, but the bright blue eyes as that artist depicted it. Um, it came with, looks like maybe 16 count Ada, 14, 14 count Ada in the kit, but I am using thirty-two count French vanilla by Live and Die LA. Using the kit floss. Two strands of floss over two linen threads. And he is looking a little weird right now because I just have the part of the blue eyes in, part of his beard, and part of his face. This is his um, temple up here. This one is not that huge, so it won't take nearly as long as Lost No More did. I kind of like to have, I have so many patterns and kits collected of Jesus Christ. And I love having just one on the go all the time that I work on a little bit on Sundays. Okay, that was my four starts. Now I have lots of other whips, works in progress that I have worked on since the last video. So now I'll show you those. My two whip go calls for this month were Beachcomber and Salt Lake City. This is 
Salt Lake City by Awesome Pattern Studio on Etsy. I live just 40 minutes south of Salt Lake City, so in Utah. I thought this one would be such a fun one to do. But I had just been working on this a bunch towards the end of the year last year, so I was not in the mood to work on Salt Lake City. I'll show it to you real quick, but I decided to switch this with another one on my Whipco board. I'll, I'll mark this one as called, but not finished yet. Then I chose another one on my Whipco board that I always love to work on in the winter, that I'll show you in a minute. And what, if I finish that one or get it, I'll mark it as finished, but not called yet. I'll just wait until it gets called later and then mark it off. So I just switched those two. But this is where Salt Lake City is at the moment. It's on 40 Count Summer Winds by Silk Weaver. But I haven't worked on it since December, I think. So I switched it out for this month with Marquois Mystery by Isabel Hockhart Vautier. This chart is still available. There's a link in my description box to her, um, a French website that sells her patterns. I've had this since uh, mid 2000s. I think. Mine is on 46 count antique white linen and I am using, it's a red, two colors I think, red and a sparkly gold is what it's charted for. But I'm using Gloriana in the Navy, Dinky Dyes Pacific Ocean, DMC 644 for the shadows and Rainbow Gallery PV10 for the white sparkle. So mine is very wintry blues and white. And I always feel like working on this one in the winter, so I felt like working on this one. I did not feel like working on Salt Lake City, <laughs> which is totally fine. I can do whatever I want. So I finished. No, I think I've just, I think this was E was already finished. I think I've just been working on this block right here. So I'm using the In the Navy on the letters and the PB Petite Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid for the white sparkle as the highlight on the letters. And then on the in-between blocks, I'm using the In the Navy and the Dinky Dice Pacific Ocean for the lighter blue. And I'm just randomly, you know, looking at it and deciding what I want in the light blue and what I want in the dark blue. And then I also, that 644 is a real, is an off-white color. You can see it in these windows right here. It just, that's not charted on here at all. I just added that as kind of a shadow or just an extra color in between some of the other motifs. Because I thought it looked cool. Oh, and I'll show you the other one. The other whip go call is Beachcomber by Carolyn Manning Designs. Mine is on 25 count even weave Lugana with the call for DMC. One over one. And I've worked on this twice now in February. So it's probably had about a thousand stitches put into it so far. Love that one, fun to work on. I was working one square at a time kind of in diagonals. And then I decided to just like pick a color and move down until my thread runs out and then pick another, whatever the next highest color is and like the typewriter method kind of that um, Stitch and Mommy does. Cause it is kind of a full coverage. It's just not confetti, it's um, little sections of color. So that's been more fun for me. 
than doing it square by square. For the moment, anyway. I may change my mind later. Okay, then I have um, four stitch alongs that I'm trying to keep up with. Four stitch alongs with monthly assignments that I'm trying to keep up with. I have lots of other stitch alongs that don't have monthly assignments. This is Teresa Kogut Halloween Sampler. It is in this Halloween book. It's called Halloween Sampler in this book. But she also has it on her Patreon website if you just want to buy the pattern and you're a Patreon member, a digital pattern. And you'll notice that this version has this orange fill-in behind. This version does not. She said she liked it both ways. She felt like this one, um, she felt like this one kind of divided the top from the bottom and was a little too heavy. And this one, she liked it better that way. But I kind of like this one. I, might, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that back fill-in or not, but I might and do, um, mine's on 46 count with one strand of floss over two fabric threads. But for this fill-in, I was thinking about using two strands of floss and just doing a tent stitch to just do, because it would make kind of a cool texture, but it would also be faster filling all of that in. It is two different colors of orange all through there. So I haven't decided yet. I'll decide when I get down there. Oh, and a group of friends and I are trying to finish this in two years. So we div I divided it up into 24 sections. And I had a viewer ask if I would please show that. So if you want to take a screenshot, here you go. I divided the middle into 24 sections. We started in September. So number one for us was the month of September. Two was October. Three was November. December, January, and I'm almost finished with this February section right here. Is that the way the numbers go? Yep. And then this border is all black cats. It's just these black cats that go on forever. So I also divided the border so that you only had to do one of these black cats a month, but there's not quite 24. It only goes to 20. So the black cat, the border should be done four months before the middle part is done. But if you're interested in that, how we divided it up. There you go. And mine is on forty six count dark mountain by XJU Designs. And I'm using the called for threads, which is a combination of DMC, Weeks Dye Works, and Classic Color Works. One strand of floss over two fabric threads. I'm almost done with this cat, but I don't have, he's holding a pumpkin on a stick and a broomstick over here. And then I haven't done my cat for this month yet either on the border but it's just looking so cute I love it oh and I need to finish this border a little bit further here and finish this pumpkin here that one has been so fun to work on Um, Kingdom of Books. I'm back on track with Kingdom of Books. It was originally a three-year stitch along with my friend Sharon. It is a kit from Russia. This translates to Make It With Your Own Hands, is the name of the company, but you can also find it under the name Andriana. A-N-D-R-I-A-N-N-A -N -N -A is also another name for this company. It is often listed under. I've seen them on eBay, the kits, um, other secondary sources. Um, 
Anyone who carries Russian kits quite often has this one. It's very popular. It came with 14 count Ada. I'm not using the 14 count Ada. I'm using a 18 count Ada that is over dyed. It came with white Ada. So I am not stitching all of this shelf right here and I'm not stitching any of this background because my over dyed Ada is similar to this color back here. I'm just using a, doing a couple of rows of this shelf color to give it some shadow anchoring under the books. And I'm doing just a couple of rows around the tops of these houses because they quite often have white detail that gets lost if it doesn't have a little bit of darker color around it. We started at this end, we were doing a half a book a month and we were gonna finish the whole thing in three years. We had this middle part section divided up into like five or six months. And we made it clear to here and then <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, spent a whole year not working on it. So now we figured out that there were six books left, so we're going to finish it this year, half a book a month. And I have January section done, but I haven't done February section yet. So I did the top half of this purple book for January and the bottom half will be for February. The titles are in Russian. I had a good friend, my friend Mary, translated them into English for me. And then I realized that all the books are about the Netherlands. And these books are supposed to look like the houses along the canal in the Netherlands. The tall skinny houses, but they also look like books. You can see where I have done just a little bit of background around the tops of those houses. So the white detail shows. And then I've also done just a couple of rows underneath the books. Since the titles, I've translated them into English and I'm stitching them in English, I have to chart those myself. I kind of get some graph paper out. I draw a square for how big the section is. And then I draw it in until figure it out how to make it fit and then I stitch it. This is 18 count Ada. It's in here somewhere that I got on Etsy from Vintage Needleworks in the color Caramel Cream. And I'm using the Kit Floss, two strands of the Kit Floss on the 18 count meter. Uh, what's my other stitch along? Teresa Kogut, Hometown, Halloween, Kingdom of Books, I swear there's an, oh, Fabulous Houses. I'm trying really hard to keep up with this one, but I don't know if I'll be able to. Okay, this is the Fabulous House series by Cottage Garden Samplings. December's house was Santa's house. Um, February's house was Castle. Um, there's pictures of the third house, the greenhouse, all over Instagram, or you can go to the Cottage Garden Samplings website and see it. But I don't have it yet, so I haven't started that one yet. Uh, the called for fabric is 40 count prehistoric by Fox and Rabbit, but I'm doing mine on 46 count prehistoric by Fox and Rabbit. I'm using the called for threads, one strand of floss over two fabric threads. And I'm doing it all on one piece of fabric. And even if I don't finish the previous house, before the next one, before I get the next one, I'll just leave it unfinished and start the next house so that they're all at least started. 
but I'm trying really hard to stay caught up. But it is, they are large. They are, uh, if you've done a Hawk Run Hollow, um, those squares are usually 92 by 92. And these are, I believe, 120 by 120. So it's larger than a Hawk Run Hollow block. So I'm trying really hard to work on it at least an hour every day. And then there are a couple of days where I, like an, a Saturday or someday where I have lots of time where I'll spend several hours on it trying to get caught up. Because I don't think an hour a day is going to do it. So I did finish Santa's house. And I'm over halfway on the castle. But I made sure I stitched over to this corner so that when green when I get greenhouse, I can go ahead and start it. And then I'll start doing an hour a day on greenhouse, and then any extra time I'll have, I'll come back and try and fill in the castle. Oh, and I did change. The white calls for a 3865 in all the, in both houses so far. And I changed mine to Blanc because I wanted it to show up better on the prehistoric. I wanted the white to pop more. I love that castle. Love those colors. Love their design aesthetic. So pretty. So I'm using all the called for colors except for 3865, which I changed to Blanc on both houses. And any time that it calls for 3865 from now on, I'll use Blanc. Or white, DMC white. Could use B5200 if you wanted the white to show up even more. But I tried blanc and then looked liked how it looked. Uh, Castle had two colors of Weeks Dye Works. I think Santa's house also had two colors of Weeks Dye Works, but Greenhouse is all DMC. No over dyed colors in that one. Okay, those are the stitch alongs. And then Every month I, t I have a list of extra large humongous projects that just need regular progress on them or they're never going to get done. And I decided to pick two of those a month and work on those. I'll go over my plans later in the month how I do that. But I'll show those to you now. This month I chose Serenity Harbor by By the Bay Needle Arts. It looks like this. Very tall and skinny. Mine is on 40 count lakeside vintage lentil linen. One strand of floss over two fabric threads. It calls for DMC, but I have switched. Any time that it uses a color that's like a large block of color, like a huge piece of grass or the water, I change to an over dyed, either a silk or a cotton. Just my own. I looked at the DMC and tried to find something over dyed that was similar. Just because I like that very when it's a large block of all the same color, I like that variation that the over dyed gives it. This is what I have so far. I also had to change the white in this one. I was gonna go back and rip out some of the stuff I did in 3865, but I don't think I ever did. So some of that white up there is Blanc, some of it's B5200. I was trying several different whites to see what I liked the best and what would show up. The ship wasn't showing up, so I had to do it brighter, but I think that lighthouse might still be 3865. This water is one color of Dinky Dyes gum leaves, I believe. Oh, and then the darker water on the around the edge is another dinky dyes. I'll put it in the description box below. But I just did it in kind of, I'll give you, I had a viewer ask if I'd show a close-up of that. I just did it in little puddly shapes. I didn't worry too much about it. I didn't fussy cut the thread. I just tried to stitch and like you can see this one kind of goes this lighter patch right here, that's one puddly strip. And I did another puddly strip, and then I'd do a strip over here, and then I'd start to fill in. And I just 
let the floss do whatever it was going to do and it looked really cool. That floss color just happens to variegate highly from a dark to a light, so it worked out really well. And I got the idea of those two colors from the Attic website. At the time that this was a stitch along, the Attic website had a silk conversion that you could buy from them. And the two colors that they mentioned on their website that you could see in the picture were these two dinky dyes blue colors. So I stole that idea from the Attic. And then the rest of the colors I just chose based on the DMC and what I had in my stash. So like this green I converted to an over dyed, this green, anything that was gonna, this brown, anything that was gonna be used in huge chunks. And I worked on this part last time I worked on it. Oh, and finished the church down here. I love working on that one. Always enjoy working on this one. I need to work on it more. And then my other choice this month, I chose the Christmas Afghan by Stony Creek. This is the booklet. I bought it from Stony Creek website. You can also get it on 123 Stitch. This layout picture right here shows you kind of a better picture of it. I have done this section, part of this piece right here, and I'm working right here on this border. I bought this piece of Afghan fabric from Stony Creek that it calls for, which is 20 count Lugana. And you use four strands of floss over two fabric threads. And it does have one over dyed color, which is DMC 4020, or sometimes called Tropical Waters. And that's these, um, there's little blue snowflakes all over. That's done in that variegated blue. And it does have a little bit, it has one, two, three, four, five colors of sparkly chronic in it. I have not gotten to the part that uses that yet. It just barely got this back in the cue snap from showing it at my end of year whip parade. So if you want to see the whole thing, go to the end of year whip parade. It's just like three videos back, maybe. But I worked right, I extended the border across was what I was doing the last time I worked on it. This is that variegated DMC blue and that snowflake. Um, one of the viewers commented and said that they were working on an Afghan as well, a Stony Creek Afghan. And I said, oh, we should have a hashtag. So I, was, I was kind of kidding, but kind of serious. So I came up with amazing hashtag, amazing Afghans. Was it plural? Yes, Afghans, S-A-L, stitch along. So if you are working on a Stony Creek Afghan, feel free to use that hashtag and I'll get to see it. I'll go do a search for it and maybe see it, depending on what your settings are. All right, Spring Creek Fever, I showed you in the end of your whip parade, I believe, I showed you the frame that my dad made that I am doing this to put on. It is a kit by Elsa Williams called Spring Creek Fever. I am not using the kit fabric. It came with 14 count Ada. I am using All the Things by Mystic Fabrics 40 count. I'm using one strand of floss over two fabric threads so it will fit in the frame that my dad made. But it does have some blended threads, so whenever it has a blended thread, I use I put the two strands together, the two colors that are blended together, and I just do a tenth stitch. 
and I think it looks cool. It has a little bit of a different texture, but I think it looks cool. So I divided it into, I'm determined to finish it by the end of the year. So I divided it into 12 sections so I could kind of see where I needed to be each month. And I, um, I don't think I need to work on it every day to keep it up to that point. So I kind of work on it most days until it's up to that month's point and then I put it away. So I did finish January section. I have not finished February section yet. It's another one that looks like watercolor. It's just so pretty. Um, I got the idea of dividing it up into 12 things from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She has a lovely YouTube channel. She's also the one that does the whip go. She has such so many great ideas of organizing her projects and then getting them done. And then I have a snow day project that I started in November and decided I'm going to stitch on this whenever it snows here at my house. But I live right at the in the foothills of Mount Timpanogos, right up against the bottom of the foothills, or kind of in the foothills, I guess. So quite often, I work at the a public junior high, which is just three blocks down the hill from me. And quite often, it will be snowing at my house, but by the time I get to the junior high, it's turned to rain. Or sometimes it's raining at my house, but you can see just above me on the mountain where it has it's snowing up above everywhere up above that. So if it's raining at my house, but I can see that it's snowing on the mountain, I consider that snow because if it's whenever it's raining down here it's always snowing in those huge mountains so look at this these cards I get from S Ward designs on Etsy I love them I have one in every project and I just mark the days that I work on the project and I also keep what fabric it's on what day I started it so that when I'm talking to you I can just pull out the card and say what the fabric was so it snowed one day in November and one day in December. In fact, Christmas, I believe we didn't have any snow on the ground. And then, look at that. It, it has seen a lot of work in January and February so far. We've got that atmospheric river just keeps heading our direction. A lot of it has been rain for us, which is really nice because we don't have to shovel it. But just above us in the mountains, it's all snow. Ski resorts are loving it. Um, sometimes I'll work on it for like an hour. We've had so many days in a row, it's turned it into like at least one thread that day if it snowed. So it has gotten a lot of love which is fine. I love it. Oh, I didn't tell you what it was. It is actually called Snow Day by Shannon Christine Designs. It only has four colors, five colors in it. It's got B5200, which I think is what it calls for. Yes. All of that white, so I'm doing it on blue fabric, just like this mock-up. So all of that white is stitched in B5200. And then it has three colors of teal. And then gold beads and white beads. But instead of those gold beads, I'm using gold petite treasure braid. But I will do the white beads, and I'll add them after I'm done stitching everything else. Because I'm stitching in a Q-snap, and I haven't figured out yet how to get <laughs> move this Q-snap all around when you're doing beads at the same time. The, the, the pattern also comes, in case you don't want to do it in teal, she gives you colors to do in a pink version, a green version, a purple version, a black version, a red version, a burgundy version, and a blue version. If you'd rather do one of those color combinations instead of teal, which I thought was really cool. I'm doing mine. Oh, I just had the card. I, want, I really like that mock-up picture, so I chose 32 Count Light Blue Lugana by Zweigert, which I felt like was really similar to the mock-up picture. And I loved how the colors looked on it, so that's what I went. So 
I started in the middle and then I worked all the way up to the top so I could find the top and now I'm working down and I'll go down until I find the bottom. Isn't that funny that you can see stripes in that this tree is all one color of DMC. How interesting that you can see stripes in there. I don't see that when I'm looking at it in person, but the camera picks that up. But I love how the sparkly gold is looking, the petite treasure braid. And there will be lots of white beads up here. And um, like this wreath has white beads on it. This tree will have a white bead garland. That one is so fun to work on. Beautiful. Mm. On Sundays, I try and pull out one of my seasonal montage pieces. I'm doing all four of them. This is winter montage. It's a Janlin kit. There's also a full coverage version by Pain Free Crafts that lots of people are stitching. That's also gorgeous. I decided to do the kit instead. But the colors on the full coverage version, this is what the full coverage version looks like, and this is what the kit looks like. So I looked at the full coverage version and I really like this background color in here. And some of the other color, the, the, like this is full coverage, so it doesn't have back stitching. So it doesn't have, this kind of has some very stark back stitching sometimes. So, and it's all done in uh, really dark brown or black, I can't remember. But instead of using that color to back stitch, I just kind of pick the darkest color, like in these leaves, the darkest green, and then I back stitched with that. Because I really like the way this one looks, but I didn't want to do all those stitches. I wanted to do the kit version, which was a lot less stitches. And then I also changed the fabric to a fabric that was kind of this background color. Um, it came with 14 count Ada that's kind of in an oatmeal color. All four kits did. But I also wanted mine on a smaller count. So I'm using 36 count mocha, light mocha, I believe, that I over dyed myself with some Rip Marigold dye to kind of trying to get at the color that I wanted, which I thought turned out really well. So I finished this section and backstitched. I finished this section but have not backstitched it yet. And then I've started on this big, um, it's like a table floral decoration that you'd put in the middle of the table that's got apples and leaves and holly berries. I would love to have this done by the end of winter, which is March, middle of March somewhere. I even had it sectioned out. I have a picture where I sectioned out how much I would need to finish each month to do that. But in my other whip parade, I think I told you that's a stretch goal. Not sure I'm going to make that. But it'd be nice if they were each season this year was at least half done. So then maybe next year I could finish them all. And then I'm also working on Lenarte Four Seasons on Sunday as well. So I do a little bit on Portrait of Christ, a little bit on, oh, that's not it. Some Sundays I work on winter montage and others, at least one Sunday a month, I'll pull out Lenarte Four Seasons. Just because I love it. And Sunday is kind of seasonal day. Cut right side up. Okay. This is a kit, a Lenarte kit. It, I'm doing it on the kit fabric, which is Lugana. I think it's also... 20 count Lugana and it's four strands of floss over two fabric. No, it's two strands of floss over two fabric threads. I don't, do I have a card in here that tells me what it is? Oh, it's 28 count Lugana. 
The kit came with 28 count Lugana and I'm doing the kit floss, two strands of floss over two fabric threads. So I'm doing everything out of the kit just the way the kit said. I know, shocking. I showed the whole thing just recently in my whip parade for the end of the year, so I won't undo the whole thing. I'm down in the winter section because it's winter and I finished this pink rose, which is part of that big flower pot in the middle, which was, I started in the middle and did, I do a little bit of that pot every month, every time I work on it. But then I work, I moved up so that, and down so that I could work in the season that it is during that season. So right now I'm working in winter. I was able to finish this cute bunny and this pink rose right here. That one is always fun to work on. Okay, last month in January, the piece that I, the humongous piece that I focused on was ABC by the Prairie Schooler. It is a, like 12 different leaflets maybe each have three letters on them. I'm doing them all on one piece of fabric. They're all close to 70 by 100, but they're not all 70 by 100. So I'm having to force them, edit them a little bit to force them to be 70 by 100. And then to make it fit in this configuration, I am combining G and H and V and W into one square. And I'm gonna to have to do some editing to do that so that it fits in a square like this. I'm doing the call for DMC, except for the really dark red in A, B and C and D, E and F was so dark that you couldn't tell the difference between it and the dark brown that it was next to. So I changed it to a lighter red that is used in the later blocks. And I've been trying to finish D is for drum. This is 28 count linen, just a plain solid creamy color. And I'm doing one strand of floss over one fabric thread. So it's tiny, it's one over one. And then I also worked on one of my whip go pieces in January was haberdashery. A haberdashery shop by Doreen Jones. It was in I need to write that down. It was in Cross Stitcher Magazine, but you can also buy it from Doreen Jones' website as a PDF, which is what I did. And I have it in Pattern Keeper, and that's how I work on it. It is full coverage, but it is only 121 by 181, only. And I wanted to try some easy count fabric, which I've never tried before, easy grid. So this is 25 count Lugana that is pre-gridded. The grid will wash out when I'm done. And I did, because I'm doing it so tiny, one over one on 25 count, sometimes when you do that, a chart that has back stitching on it, the back stitching will show up really thick because you're doing it on a smaller count than it was designed for. I don't mind that, I love how it looks. And I told a viewer that I would do some of the back stitching so she could see how that looks. If that bothers you though, and you want it to be more in scale with how tiny the stitches are, you can use just regular black sewing thread like you'd use on a sewing machine, which is much thinner. Or you could use like 103 um, silk, Soie d'Alger 100 slash three silk, which is also much thinner. But I just use the DMC because I don't care. I love the thicker look of those. So this part's black sti back stitched in the really dark color. And then there's a whole bunch of other back stitching in here in the blues and oranges and stuff that, and gray, which is what the pattern calls for. 
You can see this part is not backstitched yet at all. It looks so faded. I love how the backstitching brings it out. This part is all backstitched. Finally got down to her hair. So exciting. That one's fun to work on. Oh, one more. I told you in January that I was trying to work on mini four seasons every day. Well, that's not going to happen. I don't have enough time to keep up with the fabulous house stitch along and all my other stitch alongs and the whip go pieces and my large ones that I'm trying to keep up with to work on this every day. This is a heaven and earth designs mini for it's four seasons, but I'm doing the mini version. The artwork is by Josik or Yasik Yerka. Using the call for DMC one over one on 25 count Lugana, full cross. So what I decided to do, and I also told you I was gonna work on this every day and then like 100 stitches every day. And then Saturday, I was gonna do one of my other full coverage pieces every Saturday so that they would all get a rotation each month. But what's gonna end up, until I retire in June, I'll just work on this every Saturday and the other full coverages will have to, the large full coverages will have to wait until after I retire to have a regular rotation. But I did um, these two sections here. It's looking so good. Love that one. That is all the works in progress, I believe. Okay. I had some stitchy kindness months ago that got buried on my desk. I was so excited about it, but I kept forgetting to show it to you. My beautiful friend, Laura gifted this pattern to me. Doesn't that look just like me? I can't wait to start this. It is mm. I'll put it in the description box. On my pattern it's in Russian characters, so I can't read it, but I'll put in the description box what the name of it is and who the designer is. Oh, right there, if I could read it. It's the designer's name right there, but I'll put it in the description box. I just think that pumpkin house is so cool pumpkin and the teals to get the oranges and the teals are so pretty. Love all the detail in that. Oh, can't wait. Thank you, Laura. All right. Um, oh, and my other stitch along, that was the one I didn't talk about, is our, uh, oh, let's see, au fil de nichois. Ophiel de Nichois <laughs> by Jardin Privé, which means, oh, it's on my other paper. Um, one, from one birdhouse to another, I believe. But it is uh, a group of us who see each other every year at Stitch West decided to do a stitch along that starts in October and ends in October every year. You do not have to go to Stitch West to participate. That's just when we started and ended. And we divide it into 12 parts. And we try and do one part a month. And then by the time we see each other again in October, we're, we're finished. Um, you're welcome to join us. The hashtag is, there's one that's the name of the pattern. And then there's one that's October to October stitch along. So it's O-C-T-T-O-O-C-T-S-A-L. Colette Kingsley is our 
uh, leader of the stitch along. Her floss tube is highway stitcher. And then she's Colette Stitches on Instagram. And this chart has one birdhouse decorated for each month of the year. So we're trying to do one birdhouse a month. We started in October, but I haven't done my February house yet. I haven't even worked on it since I showed it to you in January. So I didn't show you that one, but that is the other stitch along. Oh, and it also has, I think it's birdhouses, S-A-L, is the other uh, hashtag. You can see it on Colette's Instagram or her um, YouTube channel, Highway Stitcher. Okay, this, on to purchases. This bag is from Jordy's Handmade. She is J-O-R-D-Y-S Handmade on Etsy. Her name is Jordan Orlandi. On Instagram, she is Jordy's, J-O-R-D-Y-S underscore Handmade. She is a friend of mine that lives locally, makes beautiful bags. She usually makes like the standard size bag, but my daughter and I, Marie, love the bigger bags. <laughs> so she made these 15 by 15 bags with a handle because I love having a handle. And I just think this is the most beautiful fabric. I had to have one. The inside is green. She said she'll um, probably think about making more that are this size which makes me happy. I love it because the 11 by 11 key snap fits in there so well with all the floss and all the pattern and everything else that I need to throw in there. And I love having a handle so I can grab it quickly. Look at the beautiful scissor, not scissor, zipper pull. It's gorgeous. Oh, I just think it's the most gorgeous fabric. Makes me happy. Pink and green, I think, are my favorite color combination. So I purchased that from her Etsy store. Thank you, Jordy. Jordan, <laughs> Jordy's handmade. And then I bought a few kits because apparently I haven't, I love kits. I love looking for kits on eBay. It's like my uh, other hobby when I'm really bored and I can't stitch for some reason. This is a Riolis kit called Monastery Schoenenwert after engravings of the 19th century. I just thought that was so pretty. This is a Mer Merjeka? Merjeka kit. I've always wanted to do try one of theirs. The Spring View. Because it has DMC floss and Zweigert fabric. I wonder what those black things are. Oh, they're the punch, they're where they punched out on these cards. If you wanted, you could either leave it on this or move it to these cards. But I just thought that one was so pretty as well. Um, I don't think I showed you this one. Gold Dimensions, Cozy Cove, because I love that one. The Charles Wasaki picture. Wysocki? This one is still in print. You can get it from Dimensions on Amazon. Dimensions now, the only place you can buy Dimensions now, I think, is on Amazon. That's where their Dimensions store is now. I mean, unless you buy them from someone else, like a secondary source. But if you want to buy them straight from the Dimensions Company, you have to do it on Amazon now, I believe. And I can't remember if I showed you this one either. I also bought this one, which is also still in print, I believe. European Bistro. I've seen a couple of different stitchers finish this, and it's just gorgeous. Beautiful. And... Oh, I can't remember if I showed you these. Sorry if I already did. Riolis. I 
I don't know what the name is. It probably says inside somewhere. This one's beautiful too. You can see the threads right here. Zweigart Ada, an acrylic yarn. Oh, I love the acrylic yarn. It covers so well. I just, there's something about it. I love it. And then this Riolas, a floral trip, which also has the acrylic yarn. Yes. Okay. I think that's all. And the stuff for my new starts that I already showed you. I did purchase those. Okay. So for February, my February, for the rest of February, my February plans are daily. I'll make sure Spring Creek Fever is caught up and work on the Fabulous Houses series every day. Because that's the only way that one's going to stay caught up if I can. And then I usually spend the first week or two of the month making sure all of my stitch alongs are caught up. So Halloween sampler the Jardin Privé birdhouses um, from one birdhouse to another or Au Fil de Nishwa and Kingdom of Books. So like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll try and get those caught up right at the early in the month. And then the rest of the month on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or sometimes I'll do a little bit on the stitch along and then get sick of it and work on my other Monday, Wednesday, Friday pieces, which are the Whipgo pieces, Mystery or Marqua Mystery and Beachcomber. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I work on those humongous ones that just need regular time. And this month that is Christmas Afghan and Serenity Harbor. Saturdays, I would really like to get back to working on Bless This House by Catherine Theron for a couple hours in the morning. And then many four seasons, like a good 800 stitches on that. I haven't been doing that because I've been trying to catch up on other things, but I'd like to get back to that, which is why I didn't show you Bless This House because it looks exactly the same as the last time I showed it to you. And then on Sundays, I always work on Portrait of Christ for a little bit, and then winter montage for most of the time, and then at least one Sunday, I'll pull out Lenarte Four Seasons and work on whatever season that one is, what that we're in for that part. And I think that's all of my plans. I don't have any new starts planned, but you just never know <laughs> what, what will happen, and what I will all of a sudden decide I need to start right this minute. <laughs> Hopefully not a lot, because... If I keep starting more than I finish, then it's just really hard to get to. They're all so fabulous, and I want to work on all of them, and it's just really hard to get to all of them. So I hope you have a fabulous day with some stitchy time, hopefully, um, that you're doing the things, taking care of yourself during the, if it's winter for you, or very hot summer for some down in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, take care of yourself. Do the things that fill your bucket so that you can keep doing all the things that you need to do in your life, all of your other responsibilities, and enjoy some stitching time. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.